Hey folks, you know, every now and then I get a chance to talk to somebody who has been in this industry for a long time and has just such a big presence on the internet in the music space that it is just so exciting to get to speak to them. And today I'll be speaking with Adam Ivy. Now, if you don't know who Adam is, you're not watching YouTube very closely. Adam is the top guy in music marketing on the internet, as far as I'm concerned. And he has a lot to say. And this is just the first video from this interview we did. We talked about so many things. It, I, I, I have to split it up into bite-sized pieces because there's so much that Adam talks about and that I talk about. And so you got to see this video. You're going to really like this video. We're going to talk about stuff that is near and dear to my heart about making music income, but also about artist things, artist life, artist reality. That's what we're going to talk about today with Adam Ivy. Are you ready for this? Here we go. So if you know anything about the online music marketing space, then this guy right here in front of you is very familiar to you. He's been on my YouTube watch list for years and should be on yours if you're not watching him every day. I don't care what you do, if you're a composer for licensing or if you're an artist or if whatever you are, you need to be watching Adam Ivy. Adam, thank you so much for being on to, uh, on the channel. I appreciate my, that. My pleasure. You know, it's always great talking shop with like-minded people. And uh, that intro was like, made me feel really good about myself. So thank you for, for doing that, my friend. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Just, <laughs> just here to make you feel better. Um, as you know, this is a music income channel. I, I speak to all kinds of people, not just artists, um, not just songwriters or beat makers or anything like that, but everybody who is trying to figure out a way, just like I did, just like you did, to figure a way to make an income in music and pay our bills with it. And uh, it's maybe some bills, it may be all bills, and we'll mm -hmm. talk about that. But yeah. let's, let's ask the first question that I ask everybody on this channel, and that is, how do you make music income? So since the music isn't, any, I mean, uh, a few thousand dollars a year, but it's nothing that I would be like, you know, on an ad being like, I got this private jet from the, like, you know, I'm not that guy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the m music marketing education business is a seven figure business. I have a laser tech business in the photonic space mm -hmm. called Unified Laser. That's about, I mean, about a seven figure business. Um, I have a also another business to help music producers and beat makers called the charts.com mm -hmm. where beat makers and instrumentalists can sell their beats, their services. Um, and I make a little bit of money on that. The website was not cheap to develop, so I'm <laughs> still working on breaking even there. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I do, you know, just like, like we were talking about earlier, you know, I have a YouTube channel and that yeah. probably does 30 or 40 grand a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in AdSense revenue and then the sponsorships that come through on occasion. I mean, it's it's crazy how all the different streams of revenue kind of just trickle into like one major, yeah, you know, major absolutely. thing that I send to the accountant and he figures it out. But, you know, I'm blessed to have, Four you know, guys. 10 salaried. I have 10 salaried employees now that are, wow. I mean, between the between the businesses that are, you know, here to make sure that all of our clients have as much success as possible. You know, this is... um. My, my program, uh, you know, my mentorship program is probably about nine months away from being nationally accredited, which is exciting as well. Um, awesome. been working on that in my opinion are no different than when I was, you know, making music just feverishly. It's, yeah. it's building something, it's taking something up here and, and creating something. And, uh, a lot of people, a lot of peers don't like my, uh, my, my viewpoint on this, but I think that music is ultimately a great stepping stone into other opportunities, whether it be a creative space, whether it be businesses. Um, I think that's how you build actual wealth and longevity. Do you feel that music income can be a viable way for people to pay bills? And if so, how do, how do they get to that? That's one thing I'm really interested and passionate about is, and I know you are too, is, is helping people realize their music their uh, their music talents and take them and make income with them. Where do you yeah, start I mean, with that? It, yeah, man. I mean, so many people reference the old Kevin Kelly dissertation, the thousand true fans. Right. If a thousand true fans give you a hundred dollars over the course yeah. of a year, you can make it like, 
hundred thousand dollars. And then yeah. he doesn't mention that after taxes, it's about 63. Um, you know, the, the thing is though, I think that 5,000 people over the course of 24 to 36 months is absolutely attainable. If you really just focus on building a business yeah. around your music and your brand. Um, and if you think of 5,000 people giving you $50 a year, give or take with some churn, that's over $200,000. Mm-hmm. And I know that I'm oversimplifying that not everybody is positioned to be able to do that. Soft skills matter, charisma matters, Mm -hmm. how you present yourself matters, your energy and your excitement, which would tie into that charisma. All that matters when you're in the public forum. Obviously, you know that there's people making healthy salaries, healthy, uh, you know, income, work in the back end of the music industry. I just talked to a good friend of mine, Chris Bradley, the other day about how the music industry, in my opinion, is like a restaurant. You got the front end and their front, you know, front of house and you got the back of house. Mm -hmm. And so you don't always have to be the person that's that's trying to get on America's Got Talent, trying to yeah. pack out hundred thousand, you know, person venues. You know, one of my students is making three to four thousand dollars a month just on Twitch streaming, mm-hmm. like literally gigging on Twitch. And now she's finally shout out to Jennifer Jess. She is an awesome, beautiful human, um, and sh- and you know, killing it on Spotify and all that good stuff. But the vanity metrics really don't mean that you have a genuine connection with anyone. Yeah. You know, Lord knows a lot of those vanity metrics are complete BS. And so a lot of signed acts, complete BS. And so what we have to do, though, is we have to look at what are we comfortable with? What are what are the skill sets and the things that you're familiar with? I'm going out on a on a ledge here. But like what happens if you worked all through high school at like a retail clothing store? Well, now, you know, merch, you know, the cust- the customers, the clientele, the presentation. Maybe as you're growing, you'd be great at coming out with your own merch. It, whether it be just merch for you as a personal brand or launch a clothing line of some sort. Maybe you launch a clothing line for creatives, for other bands, for other acts, and you're doing all the fulfillment, making a percentage, and that's helping you fund your music career. I think all too often people love to adopt this starving artist mindset where they're like, I have to drive Uber Eats for 12 hours a day in order to pay for that session that I'm getting, you know, uh, once a month or something like, yeah. okay, like you could do that stuff from home. You don't necessarily have to take all of your money. And like, why did you move out of your parents' house? They were like perfectly happy that you're there. You're like 19 years old. <laughs> well, I got to do this. I This is my plan A. I don't have a plan B. I'm like, right. But like you could utilize the resources that you have around you and the support. Like you're, you, I have so many conversations with, with younger folks that it's just like, it's it's yeah, eye opening. I'll just say yeah. that. And so, and then I'm sure you've seen it all as well. So it's like I think music income really needs to be reclassified, not to not to rename your channel or anything, but the way I'm, we I'm think open. about it. Okay, I think it's creative <laughs> income. Yeah, because when you romanticize yeah. just making money with the music, you stop looking at the opportunities that surround it. Do you think there is a certain kind of person who does better at making a life in music? I think that there's a certain personality type that has a thick skin because you're going to get feedback. You're going to have to crawl through a lot of, I'll say mud. I usually reference something else. You're going to have to crawl through a lot of mud (laughs) before you see that first flower poking up out of the soil. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people just don't have it in them. And I get a lot of flack for the tough love stuff. And I get a lot of flack for telling people that they have to be strong and that the weak minded will never succeed. That's in anything in life. Exactly. It's in anything in life. There's people that are at it. If you're, if you're at a day job right now, watching this, think of those people that you're like, I don't know how they got a promotion. I don't know how they got a raise. I don't know how they drive that car. I'm busting my butt every single day. Well, did you ask for a raise? Are you politicking to work your way up? Cause if you're like too good for that, the music industry is not going to be a yeah. really good place for you. There are people who people like you and I, or people between the person who's just watching this, who just as interested in music and would like to know if there's a way to get into music for Two sure. people like artists and the people we've worked for and with and teach. And then the people like us who are, are, are entrepreneurs and doers. I'm, I'm trying to get to the, you know, the thing is there, is it a doer that mentality that they have to have? You know what I mean? I, I genuinely think that it can be said with complete certainty that a certain work ethic is required for extraordinary results in anything. And so if if somebody is out there making amazing music, but then looks at the other spokes on the wheel, the marketing, advertisement, mm-hmm. putting yourself out there, networking, travel, and they're like, I'm not interested in that stuff. 
Well, it's like buying a bunch of really expensive, fancy lawn care equipment because you love mowing your lawn, but not wanting to start a business. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to start a business, you got to knock on some doors. You got to make yeah. some flyers. You got to be seen that that attention is really on the front end that it, well, I would argue that on both sides of the music industry, that attention is really needed to build up a reputation, get referrals, be able to, you know, have have that demand. And, and you know, I was just joking with one of my students the other day. I said, we have to do this. It's time over tension, just like bodybuilding. You have to go through it for long enough so that people can say that you got lucky. So, you know, and, and that's the thing. I think that you could have, and, and I'm not blind to this fact. I think I'm one of the only people on YouTube that will say straight up, not everybody's built for this. You can be unbelievably good at what you do. And if you give up a day early, you're a statistic. You can go out there and go after it, go after it, have a number one hit, get a platinum plaque and still be broke 20 years later. I think the biggest block, and maybe you can charm, chime in on this too. What yeah. The biggest block for people to to make music their life or to make a living in any kind of music whether it's an artist or a, a composer or a uh, anything in the music business and there are a thousand things that people could do to make money with music for sure but it is just making the decision to do it and then moving towards that i had a i used to have a, a thing i would say i can lead a, a horse into the studio but i can't make them tour and <laughs> uh <laughs> You know, it was that that kind of continual push to try to get people to do work. I couldn't make them do work. And I can't at, sit there and talk to a student and then say, well, I just don't know what I want to do. And, right. uh, you know, they've already tried a variety of things. And now music is just the latest thing they want to try to do. But I, I think that's one of the biggest blocks people have is just to say, I'm going to do this and then do it. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, I think that realistically intent is just as important as work ethic because what's yeah. your intent in everything that you do right so it's like you know there's a saying how you do anything is how you do everything and i mm -hmm. think that a lot of people half step a lot of people have incredibly low amounts of patience and music is not a good business if you don't have any patience and you're you're greedy and you're just going into it for the money like i said i had not made any money with my music for the first three years and then the first year i really put my all into it i made about 34 grand um and figured out a lot about myself and a lot about what I was doing and had a couple great conversations with mentors of mine and, you know, went all in. And so, you know, with, with music income, it looks like a million different things to a million different people. Yeah. Um, I think one thing that's a stumbling block for a lot of people is they're afraid to ask for money because they grew up in a scarcity mindset where mm -hmm. it's the starving artist disease where we don't deserve money. We're always going to be broke. It's always going to be a struggle. And then when you have the one out of a thousand people that are just killing it, all the other people are either mad at how they're doing it or they're talking smack when in reality, they could learn a boatload from those people. Um, and not everybody is built to be a number one. I mean, yeah. not everybody is built to run a business themselves. A lot of people are great number twos, number fives, helping somebody else. You can get into great shape without the tools, without the establishment, I should say. You just have to find a way. And, you know, you and I, I think one thing that we're passionate about is showing the way yeah. and then what they do with it. You know, I think both of our goals is I, I want all of my students to surpass whatever success I ever had. You yeah. know, I made a little over eight hundred thousand dollars with my music, give or take. And uh, I hope that all of my students surpass that, you know, yeah. and it, it's it's when you have a mentor that's very good at what they do at some point. The mentee, the person that learned from you is going to say, like, oh, I, I think I know more than that person now. Well, good. Let's move into marketing now because I know right. marketing is where you, what you like to talk about. And let's talk about your main focus, which is music marketing. Is it, do you think marketing is job one for you? Yeah. So marketing is all about bringing your product to market. I mean, that's the, the premise of the word marketing. You're mm -hmm. taking something, you're bringing it to market. And so I think that people mix that up with advertisement or promotion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so as a, as a music creator, we have a product that we're creating when we bounce something out, we, we export that song, we have it ready. We work on all the different pieces of content to then engage someone to try to make them interested, try to lure them in and hook them. And so that's what we're doing with marketing is people overcomplicate it. It's getting the attention and then nurturing that attention to convert. So if you don't have any offers, like we were talking about, people are afraid to ask for money. They don't position mm -hmm. themselves to make money. 
well, now you have all, all this attention and you have the nurturing, but you don't have anything else there. You know, so I think that when we're looking at the connections, we're looking at uh, the content itself and then the conversions, um, we have to have all three in order to actually build a business. And marketing is the easiest way of doing it, even though I think a lot of people are completely overwhelmed by it because they could sit there and learn an overcomplicated DAW. They could figure out how to sequence. They could figure out audio frequencies. But when it comes to posting something that's engaging, they freeze up like, oh, I don't I don't have time for that. No, no, you do. You do. What, what specifically are you finding that your students, how are they winning at, yeah. at marketing and, and that helping their, their music? Where are the wins coming from right now in general For sure. marketing? You know, I have a student right now that's gained over 250,000 TikTok followers in the last 60 days, and that is directly correlated to the income from Patreon, the income from merch sales, the income from Spotify streams. Um, it's so like... For his path, more on the front end, he's now been contacted by several country music stars about opening up for them, about awesome. you know what what that looks like, and so the money follows attention, and right. so what we have to do is we have to go out there and use the different pieces of of you know the platforms and the different tools that are available to us, mostly for free, yeah. to be able to to cultivate and do something with that attention, because like I think everybody would agree for the most part that when you have a song that you care about, you'd like other people that you relate to, to care about it as well. Yeah. You'd like to tell them more about, you know, what, what's the premise of the song? Where'd that come from? You know, what's your origin story? What, what made you start making music? Well, all these pieces are elements that we can provide to them. I mean, excuse me, back in the day, not too, too long ago, I would buy a copious amount of CDs when they would come out. Every every weekend, I would buy five, six CDs, yeah. and I would go through each and every one of the inserts, all the books, right? I'd want to see behind the, behind the scenes photos. I'd want to read all the lyrics as I was listening to those tracks. Um, it, a lot of those would have merch order forms on the back, you know, with the, you just rip it out and you put a stamp on it and you could order a, a hoodie or a t-shirt. Yeah. And, and now with digital, that's what we have to do in different platforms. We have to take those exact things and place them so that if somebody's not buying a physical copy, which they're not doing a whole lot of anymore, unless it's something, you know, kind of, uh, you know, unique, like a vinyl drop or something. Um, I think it's a great way to give people not only attract them and share something you're passionate about, but give them an insight on what makes you tick. Who are you? Yeah. Do you resonate with the community? Because I think that any major independent artist, uh, that that is that has found major success is what i'm getting at has a connection has a community around mm -hmm. them around their their belief system around why they make music the experience that they want to share with people and so that's why the festival culture has exploded in the last 10 to 15 years you know edm and country and everything in between where people want to connect in person yeah. they want to see the real they want to see the raw they don't care if you're using a Ari Alexa camera and it looks super cinematic on every single one of your posts. Like that's not relatable. So I think that marketing is a way for us to say, I got something to say. And oh yeah, by the way, I could say it to all these people.